This is a great topic on the idea that backlash or repercussions arise when you make positive changes. I have noticed in the past that there were times when I felt things trying to stop me from doing something that was improving my life and energy. It felt like I was sabotaging myself. Can you explain how this concept works? Of course. When you understand that some of the things that go wrong are from backlash, then you can relax a bit more knowing that you are changing your blueprint, therefore changing your life. It's comforting to know that your future is improved as you release negative energy from your energy field, which opens many doors and opportunities. Backlash doesn't always occur when you make positive changes, but when there are entities involved, which is most of the time, you can get different reactions as negative entities feed off low vibrations and emotions. They want you to stay in negativity, suffering and hardship as you are their food source and their existence depends on your negative energy or emotional output. When they know changes are coming, they can spit the dummy and cause drama and chaos to prevent you from breaking free. The world is experiencing this breakup right now. It's a little rough at first, but it's like a breath of fresh air once you step into the new timeline. This transition is much easier for those who have devoted time to removing toxins, negative thoughts, trauma, pain and suffering. All negative spiritual attachments are parasites. Their vibration is low, they are typically ego-driven, damaging and out for themselves. When they are in your auric field, you experience their thoughts, feelings and emotions. Most people with attached entities are unaware of their presence. As a result, the sufferer assumes they are responsible for creating the ongoing patterns of negative thoughts and undesired emotional responses they are experiencing. They end up possessing the entity's energy as their own. They eventually believe, this is who I am. They mistakenly live their lives surrounded by lies and feel powerless to change. So negative entities can feed off like drugs, alcohol, toxins, junk food, anything that lowers the vibration of a person's energy field. They attach to vulnerable people. Therefore, children can be an easy host for them to attach. You can find them in many hospitals, lunatic asylums and places of fear and suffering. The concept of everything being alive with energy and the idea that our emotions and actions are influenced by different energy frequencies are rooted in ancient spiritual beliefs and quantum physics. In the spiritual realm, Certain energetic forces flourish amidst negativity, torment and hardship. They are drawn to the anguish of individuals feeding off their pain. Sensing a transition or alteration, these forces retaliate, entering a defensive stance to retain their group. This occurs prior, during and after these entities are removed. Oh, so I have living entities in my energy field? Sounds <laughs> gross. Yes. You would know yourself any time you clean your house, detox your body, remove toxic relationships, improve your attitude and thoughts, things flow better. At its core, everything in the universe is composed of energy. This isn't just a philosophical or spiritual statement. It's a scientific one. According to quantum mechanics, at the tiniest scales, particles are vibrating energy packets. Even when we consider something solid, it is made up of these energies in motion. The idea that emotions vibrate at different frequencies has been proven because Lynn Mataggart's peace intention experiment proved that they were conducted with global participants and aimed at altering social behaviors and the consciousness of a certain location. So in 2008, the peace intention experiment involved 12,000 people directing peaceful thoughts towards Sri Lanka, resulting in a 74% drop in violence post the experiment. To date, there's been over 25 scientific web-based studies that have been conducted to investigate the influence of collective thought on aspects like plant growth, water pollution, and reducing violence in conflict zones. So these experiments prove that emotions like love, gratitude, and joy vibrate at higher frequencies, whereas emotions like fear, anger, and hate vibrate at lower ones. So you're saying that everything is living or made of energy, so it attracts the same frequency entities. Can you explain how that works with relationships? Yes. 
The like attracts like principle is often illustrated in the law of attraction where a person attracts circumstances and events that match their vibrational frequency. This means if someone continually operates at a higher frequency, like through love and joy, they will attract more positive experiences. However, someone that vibrates at a lower frequency through anger, resentment, hate and fear, they will find themselves in more challenging situations. Entities are drawn to individuals or spaces that resonate with their vibrational frequency. Thus, a person who often exudes positivity attracts positive energies or entities, while someone mirrored in negativity will become a magnet or food source for negative ones. Relationships, whether friendships, associates, family ties or romantic partnerships involve an exchange, an exchange of energy, a harmonious relationship can be a source of nourishment wherein both parties feel energized and fulfilled. Conversely, in a dysfunctional relationship, one party may feel drained because they're constantly expending energy to sustain the difficult relationship. Just as individuals in an unhealthy relationship may react when one person begins to recognize they have other options and pulls away, the other party may respond with increased negativity and control. They sense that their connection or their energy supply is at risk, prompting them to go into survival mode. Similarly, this is how negative entities behave. When an individual endeavors to change their vibrational frequency by adopting more positive habits or pursuing healing, negative entities can intensify their influence or even retaliate. This is to preserve their source of energy or sustenance as they harvest and steal a person's energy. These entities are drawn to negativity in people, places and things leading to tangible consequences. The story of Julie Lopez, who lived a life as a witch, recounted it in The Curses Topic. She also confirmed that this increased intensity when she said, My demon spirit guide started to chase me once I became Christian. I felt him touching me and moving things in my house. It is reported that demons increase their intensity when you try to pull away from them. This is similar to how the human body possesses an ability Ability to anticipate and react to specific recurring events or anniversaries, especially those tied to intense emotional experiences such as the loss of a loved one, past traumas, or even large-scale environmental crises. This phenomenon is often referred to as the anniversary reaction, and it manifests in both psychological and physiological responses and begins unconsciously prior to the event. This is because the information is stored in the energy fields until the information in the energy field is changed. So you're saying that everything is already contained in the field of energy or consciousness, which is why we can get a sense of things before they happen? Yes, exactly. Another example is when an individual undergoes a transformation, such as losing weight and embracing a healthy lifestyle, while their friends remain overweight and lead unhealthy lives. When this transformed individual reconnects with their old friends, their old buddies, there's a shift in dynamics or a difference in energy patterns. This divergence can disrupt the equilibrium and create tension within the group. There can also be a backlash or side effects to physical detoxification as that can create a healing crisis. When a person undertakes physical detoxification methods, particularly if their body has accumulated a significant amount of toxins, the initial phase can be challenging as the body works to release these toxins from tissues and prepares them for expulsion, various symptoms might emerge. These can range from fatigue and headaches to flu-like manifestations. Emotionally, a person may experience mood fluctuations or bouts of irritability. This could be due to the entities connected to the toxins responding to these changes, given that parasites 
are known to thrive on cellular toxic waste. Interestingly, the body senses this upheaval, which is why some people hesitate or abandon the detox process. Similarly, when you attempt to cleanse negative or stagnant energies from yourself, your aura or your consciousness, it isn't always a smooth transition as these energies or entities which have anchored themselves deeply over the years, or even lifetimes, begin to be released. There can be a spiritual or energetic backlash. They are clinging on to near death. One might experience emotional upheavals, unexplained anxieties, or even encounter external challenges that test their resolve. So just as the body can react adversely when releasing toxins, the spirit too undergoes its form of healing crisis when purging negativity. The depth and intensity of this backlash is contingent on various factors. The longer the negative energies have resided within or the more attached or intertwined they've become with your energy field. Shedding them often requires a deeper, more intense purification process, leading to a more pronounced backlash. I have experienced this type of backlash many times. The backlash would often appear prior. One of these times was when I created the sixth module of the forensic healing system called the soul module, and that covers the details of how we are tied up on the matrix. It removes and reverses this energetic matrix and it removes the entities, the implants that feed off our suffering. So I was excited to complete the module and teach it for the first time in Venice Beach, USA in California. So that was in 2017. So while I was at the venue, I remembered I left my handbag in the hotel room and I thought that I should go back and get it as it contained like my money and important information. So I returned during my lunch break because it was just sort of close by. It wasn't too far away. And as I was walking through the very colorful Venice Beach streets, I noticed a friendly looking young guy. He was just riding his bike casually along the footpath. Then out of the blue, the bike rider accidentally clipped this lady's handbag on the bike handles, which caused her to react really strangely. So the lady was around 35 years. She was dressed in a long kind of hippie skirt dressed and looked really stressed. Then she screamed with intensity, like, and she was really mad. Now I'm effing hungry. And she said it again. Now I'm effing hungry. And then waved her arms and yanked her bag off the handlebars. And then I, I, I could see the shock on the bike rider's face. And after she pulled her handbag from the bike, he just rode off. The situation seemed really strange. It astounded me. But I knew the universe was talking to me. And I wondered what was the message. As I questioned why the lady said she was hungry and blamed the bike rider because he accidentally snagged her handbag, it was a very bizarre moment. And as I proceeded to walk back to the hotel, I pondered the meaning of what had occurred and left just myself open to receive the information. I just had the sense that I will get an answer. So after I exited the hotel room with my handbag, I walked by the incident location the answer came to me when I glanced at the footpath where the crazy lady had flipped out. The answer then came to me and I understood it was because the soul module removes negative entities, it removes their food source, and now they are hungry and now they are angry. That insight instantly brought a smile to my face, knowing that in a small way, forensic healing is contributing to bringing in higher consciousness and eradicating darkness. There is a spiritual fight for our souls. We can win by returning to pure spiritual love. It's a journey to reach the state of pure love, but it's the purpose of our existence. When you evolve into pure love, you can exit the matrix. So just as a healthy body radiates strength and vitality, an unhealthy one grapples with limitations and challenges and will attract similar entities to it. It's true, the world is going through a lot of chaos and turmoil. 
which I am sure is part of the cleansing process. Can you tell me the time you removed negative energy from a past connection that caused you a lot of backlash? Yep, sure. Well, that was during a time, uh, a very short, brief period of my life when I dated this guy called Greg and he wasn't really my type. But during one of our early conversations, I just had this thought in my mind. I said, you're not my type. And then I felt like he was just responding to my thoughts because then he turned around and he just said out of the blue, oh, maybe you just need a friend. And then he touched the top of my hand. And then I spontaneously just flung my hand away as if, I don't know why, I was just kind of strange. But then something changed, something triggered. And my feelings just changed towards him. And we did have a relationship and there was a really unusual connection where I wasn't in love with him. It was really strange. I would say things like, well, you're like my air to breathe. I had to be connected to him. And, and I didn't, I thought it was unfair. I felt like he had all the power and cause this, he would be running the show when he would see me and, and then he would never say when he, we would catch up. So I kind of like lost all my power in the relationship and it was just crazy. I knew it was never going to last because he wasn't a very good communicator. So it did finish and it was done over the phone by, by text message and I just lost the plot. I couldn't sleep. I felt low self-worth. I had these negative thoughts in my head. I had to have the music on at night. I had to have lights on at night. I was just, I was such a hot mess. I lost six kilos. I was just, I was just completely the most strangest spiritual time of my life. And then I tested forensic, uh, with the forensic healing system and it showed it was a curse or and voodoo it showed up it was voodoo and weirdly enough during that time I happened to see on tv this show called the miniaturist and that's about little dolls of people um, back in the 17th century the wealthy people would play with these big doll houses they would get miniature dolls of themselves or the furniture that they had in their house and then play with it and that was that's like voodoo it's because you are controlling the energy of that person when you create that. That's what voodoo is. And I happened to see this show and it just confirmed to me that at some point in some lifetime, that's what was done to me. And I felt like he put a love spell or more like a love curse on me because it was just so strong. So when I did remove the voodoo and the curse from my energy field and because I was such I was in such a heightened space, spiritually really heightened. It wasn't hard at all to do because it can almost just be like words that will actually do it. I removed it and then followed. After I removed it, I felt immediate relief. I felt like just I could breathe again. It was like this weight, this pull, it was almost like a, a my heart was just being pulled out of me. It was just the most excruciating spiritual experience of my life, I think. I've had a lot, but that was probably the biggest. And then all this backlash occurred. It was like I had this chance meeting with this girl and then I got lice from her child. Then I remembered... Uh, falling and had this bad accident my neck got even worse and then I was walking around with this really foggy head and I was just making mistake after mistake and getting parking tickets and and it, and it, then weird things on the computer then I had someone working for me at the time and she was kind of weird and she was doing exactly what I was doing she she was just hooked on or had this this guy done this kind of curse on her and she could not not like him yet he wasn't wasn't a nice guy she could not stop talking to him it's just I'm talking about bizarre but the backlash it was just one thing after the other and I was going nuts just going nuts with everything feeling like it was attacking me so I finally got through it and then I got over it but it did take a lot it actually was the took a long time to recover from that particular instant took me a couple of years to finally, 
there was kind of more to it and you'll find out that during these topics there was more to it but it did take me around two to three two to three years to get over it so another story was when I was going to undergo a hysterectomy and prior to the operation I just had weird things happening at home computers and just some weird emails from people and it's just like you just know that things are off and it feels horrible feels like this cloud just came over you then on the way to the hospital um, the we went through a, a orange light the lights flashed and I go oh great we're going to get a ticket then we were late then when I got there the guys calling out all the people's times for their operations and then I'm waiting to think when am I was I already called or when am I going to be called and he called me at the right at the end I had to wait like an hour then my name was called and I was one of the last people having an appointment and I thought oh there's just no flow because I said in my in my mind that I'm this is going to flow this is going to be easy you watch and I'll get no I won't need uh, painkillers it'll be just super easy and it was anything but then I was hadn't eaten for 24 hours so I was really hungry and cold and then you have to wear this just this gown that's freezing and I was in a room for the rest of the day just waiting and then there was a I could hear this guy calling out or screaming in the next room get me out of here get me out of here like bizarro stuff was going on then the doctor actually did come over to me and then he's just saying he goes oh you know what you you won't know yourself after this operation and I thought what a well I thought maybe I don't I'm not myself so anyway I went under finally had the operation I went under and then the male nurse who didn't really care at all because he was too busy talking about his party that he was at the night before with his medical colleagues there woke me up and it was quite abruptly and and I woke up in a lot of pain like really bad pain and then I'm trying to talk because I'm still I couldn't it was really difficult to talk I was really weak and he goes what and I go pain and then he goes as if I should have known you got to press your own morphine to get your painkiller which he didn't even show me uh, so anyway so then I get moved to the room where I was going to be uh, staying and then in the room was another family and then there's this screaming kid running around and I'm highly sensitive at that point I'm like oh fantastic screaming kid so and I couldn't even talk so I'm in the room and then it got to it was about seven o'clock at seven o'clock the kid goes there's silence the pain stops and I'm everything just goes to normal it was just from, from this chaos to this peace and then my husband at the time told me that back in the house where our house he said there was screeching in the in the walls and the lights were flickering on and off and it was so bizarre and he said at seven o'clock it all stopped so what I realized is that these fibroids that we get from abnormal growths in us whether it's cancers or fibroids or all of this stuff have entities attached to it and what happened was by taking them out the entities get turfed out as well because they no longer have a live food source because the fibroids or whatever you take out will be thrown away and there's no nothing growing it and so they're going to die and they're just starting to crack it so that's information came to me like sometime after after I'd learned forensic healing and after I used to remove entities and I used to find that it was hindsight that the information would come to me then I go oh now I understand what that was all about and it's very much it happens a lot when people are coming to a workshop and these entities know they're going to be eliminated and then crazy things can kind of like you know prevent the person from turning up or they just get antsy or things can happen but I do know this the more you clean your body the more you take off you know negative energy 
the the less of them they there are so most well often there can be less backlash but that's not always goes to plan as well so check the following list that might reveal if you are experiencing backlash prior to during or after making positive changes In the upcoming video titled Review, Reflect and Respond, you'll discover if you are experiencing any type of physical or spiritual backlash and how to get through the backlash with minimal impact, paving the way for a life filled with happiness, freedom and abundance.